Hi everybody and welcome back to my painting channel. Today is going to be a seascape and it's going to be in watercolour. I say seascape, it's very nearly a seascape. You know that little time when the, the tide is going out and you get pools of water in the sand and you get eddies of water trying to chase back to where that tide is going out to. That's what I'm painting but I've added one more ingredient to that. I've done it so it's very very early in the morning where the sun is rising those colors are rich and crisp and contrasty oranges blues and deep reds and blues and violets so you've got wonderful contrast to enjoy during this painting now it is a time lapse and please watch it through to the end it's not a very long video and at the end of it if you want to get your paints out and have a go yourself please do you'd be so welcome and i'd love to see the results if you want to email me them afterwards the email is in the descriptions below and if you do want to see the whole of this video in its full and entire narrated form you need to go over and have a check out on my patreon page i hope by the time you watch it that this is it's there and it's up and running but if it's not check back in a little while it won't be far off i really am working on it very very hard so check that out and it may be that there's a tier there or something there that you really want to get involved with and you'll be most welcome to become a patron and come on board so enough of that said enjoy the video i catch you at the other end and uh see how you get on all the best for now bye bye Okay, we're going to get right into this now. We're going to use both the yellows, Indian and Oriolan, to make a very, very fluid wash at the top. Now, there's a slight angle to the paper, uh, allowing this to uh, quite easily flow down the paper as we go. But don't be afraid of putting an awful lot of paint, a lot of water on, some oranges and some reds going in now, just as we come away from that top center area where it's going to be a lot more light. Lots more yellows and oranges going in to really make a strong colorful mix as the wash will allow to do its own thing bit of india uh, a little bit of venetian red going in there and a little bit of uh, ultramarine too so they will find their own way in the painting now i'm actually lifting out a little bit of the white or the paint off of the center because that's where the sun is hitting the sand at, the, at its peak and that's really the the important part now when you're doing this, if you really sort of want something to really show out bright light, then make everything around it somewhat darker. And vice versa, of course, if you want something to appear dark, make everything around it appear lighter. It's just a great way of increasing the contrast. And what I'm doing is I'm influencing that center spot with darker yellows, darker uh, Indian yellow aureolin and just keeping that little center spot nice and light and bright and those darker colors are really working for me and I'm just teasing the color down and I let it to do what it's uh, what it really wants to do I'm putting some oranges over the top of that blue and I shall do that on the other side too just let it find its own way that's the beauty of this. The wash is so simply and let it do its own thing. Now you can see I've got an awful little bit of blue up the top there. I didn't see it happen. It was when I first put the blue in and it dried up a bit. So I'm using a stiff brush to, which is damp and allowing that just to take some of that pigment out of the paper. Now, because I'm using a uh, 300 pound hot press paper, it's more tolerant than rough or cold press papers now i'm trying to influence that stain by putting some oranges over the top directly and allowing that to filter through and hopefully by the time we finish a lot of that will have gone so we've now going to mix up the second part this i've allowed it to dry and i'm just going in to put some of the wet sand ripple bars in that create the uh, or will create the uh, eddies and stuff that i will apply a little later but you can see how that light section in the center really evokes the light and as i draw my little brush marks over so i'm adding more oranges and even yellows to the mix so that they become a little bit more lighter towards that sun area a little bit of violet blue going in and a little bit of umber just touches here touches there little soft marks with yellow I'm pretty much drawing with a small round brush. I'm not doing too much hard work, just 
tapping it in and and sort of allowing to lift some of that out with a with a bit of a tissue paper just take off the excess but as they come further away or further down there's stronger oranges stronger yellows it's just it's just great fun this painting because it's not actually drawing structure it's drawing color it's influencing the eye to see different beautiful colors and strong lights and great warm and cool contrasts now i've added a little bit of ultramarine blue a little bit of ultramarine violet in there just to give that uh, area where maybe some of the wet sands just taken a bit of the sun uh, or the sky above it but look how that orange i'm applying now is just running its way into it and doing whatever it wants to do I find that so nice because it, the whole thing becomes quite organic. Now I'm going to put a bit of um, the ultramarine violet in and a little touch of indigo just to suggest where that pool of water will sit in the whole uh, part of this painting. So you can see that it's a very definite shape towards the bottom of the painting but that gives us an awful lot of room to play around with the structure above it and allow those colors to quite literally do what they want to do. More oranges, more yellows, fire and heat uh, and glow of that morning sun. Now I'm adding a little bit of the blues violets in there just to give a cooler set to come up uh, as it comes down. But you know it's it's just so it's just so much fun because i don't know quite where this paint's going to end up going and what it's going to do i have some idea of course i do but look how much fun you can have by exploring and letting those mixes happen okay now i'm going to mix up some of the darker blues just to come in there and start suggesting some of these little tributaries in the bottom of this where this water's lying and for that, I am using my rigger, but it's just very suggestive. Bit of indigo, a little bit of uh, cobalt blue going in there too. And it's just allowing that paint to just mix and mix well. Now, as I said just now, you know, or you can see if you're watching, that I'm mixing pretty much straight on the paper. It allows the paint to do whatever it wants to do and mix and play. And the fun is that, no one can say well that tributary is wrong or that wasn't there yes if i if i sit the reference right next to this you can say well that's a little bit different of course this is my version as so would your version be your own version it doesn't matter if you've got every piece of mark of blue or tributary water cascade wherever it is doesn't matter it's your painting and it's having fun it's allowing that paint to mix and do what it wants to do whilst having some uh, idea set in the drawing of it. You can see how wet that paper's got on the right hand side. And that's great because now I'm allowing myself to come in with some really rich reds and oranges. One thing I will do is I don't want this blue too much wet or in evidence as I come around. I'm going to have to leave a little bit of light paper before it because if i touch it the whole thing is going to bleed into it and i really don't want to do that so you can see i'm being extremely careful as i come around the edge of that puddle with those uh, umbers and uh, the uh, other colors that are in there the reds the oranges and the um, sepia which is playing a big part in this all transparent colors ex even the vermilion the vermilion the transparent orange and the sepia all transparent colors so they allow that paper or the white paper to glow through the whole thing and just adds for another level of excitement i'm actually warming up the center now with some oranges and some more yellows just to take up where the color has just dried a little bit on the pale side maybe just to influence it and you can see how that just bleeds into some of the blues running some uh, aureole in now into the center but i'm taking it out with a sponge so it gives a bit more of a staining value now i've allowed it to dry and we're going to really push on to the end now so i'm going back in and i'm reinforcing some indigos into this puddle area there's a little bit of blue in there too a little bit of sort of 
uh, ultramarine gone into that mix as well as we come on through and I could see there was a few places where there were some orange little spots that either I'd left or I had dropped it doesn't matter but I'm using those as little islands of sand in that puddle and they will come into great use later on adding a lot more blues and more ultramarine blues to create this um, system of eddies and tributaries it looks like the amazon delta or whatever that big basin of delta rivers is um i'm not quite sure which one it is now but anyway i digress but it, it just looks amazing how you got these huge contrasts and you can see that sand as you go up the paper disappearing away from you and the scale is such that the, and and the contrasts are such and the values of the colors are such that it almost you can see it leading away and that's actually implied also by these tributaries you can see how i'm allowing more water to mix with the eddies of uh, blues as they go further away and mix with the sand colors and they become much stronger as they get closer to me on the the whole system of this area right down in the center in the foreground now I'm adding some more umbers and more uh, sepia tones in here. Uh, little eddies that may have been there before but have dried up. So they're still in the wet sand, still in evidence, but we're just actually adding another layer. And I'm going to go down and soften out some of this blue. Some of this just take out with a damp brush, allow some of that pigment to be lifted. And that gives a light, shiny area to the water and allows you then to put a darker area in which will be a shady side or shadow side it indicates that there is a cut or a depth to the sand where the water is now we're going to get on and put some balance to this we're going to start adding some of the blues and a little bit more uh, ultramarine went in than i wanted and a bit of cobalt too much cobalt so i'm going to have to address that in a minute and get rid of that and maybe put some reds into that and lose the impact of the blue but as again as I did the other side I'm putting a lot more water with those tributaries way up in the top so that they appear to be going away from me and they become stronger in pigment and in value as they come closer to me a little warmer in the center where they're right directly in conflict with the Sun and it adds to that glistening effect of the water little bit of orange a little bit of yellow going in just lift some of it but it's still there and it adds another dimension now we're coming back to the blues and we're just going to really put a, a little bit of an end to this in a way we're coming up to the conclusion you can see actually on the left hand side how much drier that pigment goes when it is dry because the colors that i'm putting on now in the center there are the same degree of value as I put on to the left hand side and that too will dry back given time now I'm putting a little bit more uh, umbers and, and russets in in the form of uh, some sepia into the end there into the bottom and letting that dampen off on tap off so it doesn't become a hard edge now I'm enclosing the top what I'm trying to do is hold the viewers eye into the center of the picture by capping off that top with a dark area then it holds the attention to the center which is where I really want people to look I want people to enjoy that light intense light to the top center and the eye coming down through those tributaries to the water at the bottom so I've put in this dark area and I'm using negative space to lighten the blue areas so that you can see that there are there is wet sand darker patches but also the lighter tributaries running through them I'm doing the same to the other side as well so that it holds people into the center of the picture and allows some of that paint to come cascading down and fill in voids and, and just literally do what it wants to do and I'm coming in with a bit more dark at the bottom there but that will go lighter as the painting dries out now what I said to you about putting the darker edges in this is it this is just putting in some of the uh, shadow areas which indicate that there is a depth of uh, sand there before it touches the water 
and I'm going to use those little islands in the center of that water to do the same thing. It reinforces a third dimension. It gives the whole area as though the water is cutting its way and uh, taking sand down with it. So you've got three dimensions uh, into the water there. And I'm actually bringing a little closer the edge of the wet sand to that edge of the water. So it touches it in one or two places, but not enough to make a problem for me. I've simply now come to the conclusion, a few little washes of blue, little washes of warms over the whole thing. You can see it jumping as the um, painting comes to a conclusion where I'm making one or two final choices of warmth. But pretty much we're done. There's not a lot left to do to this painting. I've done, I've checked it, I've looked at it. I just find that the whole thing becomes organic. It's, it's contrast, it's warm, it's cool, but we're finished. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm sure you did, and I'm sure you got something from it. Now, you've watched the video. I hope now you're gonna have a go yourself. Get those paints out, don't be shy about it, have a go and email me the results. I'd love to see them. The email is in the descriptions below. So don't worry about that. Just email me and I will reply to any of those that come through. It'd be great to see them and see how you got on. And if you also fancy seeing the uh, full version, don't forget to jump over to the Patreon page and have a look at that too. There's lots going on there and lots to interest you, I'm sure. And if you have liked this video, then click that like button. That'd be fantastic. And also pass any comments. Put the comments in the uh, comment section below. It's great. I'll answer each and every one. I love reading them. I love engaging with the with you, uh, the viewers. At the same time, if you have enjoyed this and you're not a subscriber, hey, click that button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps grow my audience. It also lets you know when I upload more content for you to see and enjoy. So click the subscribe button. And if all else fails, I'll see you all in the next video. I look forward to it. Next Thursday is a day. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Thanks for watching everybody. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button and uh, add your comments. They'd be very welcome and always answered. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button now. And for your information, there's another video there and another video there. All the best. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Bye.